and welcome back to another episode of Great Lakes Post live stream. I'm Casey Campbell. Thank you for tuning in. We have a very special guest today from the NTT Data IndyCar Series, coming off an 11th place finish at Texas Motor Speedway in the IndyCar Series opener last week. Charlie Kimball, the driver of the number four Novo Nordisk Chevrolet for AJ Foyt Racing. Uh, Charlie, thank you so much for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. It's always fun talking racing, especially after having gone racing. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that you ran up front in the top 10 all night, and uh, I know uh, some things happened in, you know, late in the race to, uh, you know, go back. But 11th is not bad, you know, after the year that you had and after the year that A.J. Foyt Racing had last year. Uh, overall, I'd say it's pretty good. Would it, would it be a pretty good day for you? It was. It was a really good day. From when we unloaded uh, Saturday morning, the car was pretty competitive. We felt pretty good about it in practice. We made a couple of changes, not big things, just tweaked it here and there uh, to get better for qualifying. But we'd spent a lot of time before we ever got to the racetrack thinking about what the day was going to look like, how it was going to be different being a one-day show, practice, qualify, race. And you have to race your qualifying car. Usually we're trimming out and qualifying to try and get as fast as possible. But racing our qualifying car meant we ran a lot more downforce. And, and we had to make sure the gears were right in, in qualifying so that they were right for the race as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, these one-day shows. But you still had practice. You still had qualifying on, like, NASCAR. But, you know, I know a lot of guys, that was their first time on an oval. But how did you adjust to all that and, you know, not, I mean, not having the fans there, wearing a face covering and all that fun stuff? It, it was very atypical. It was very unique. Um, wearing a mask all day. It was a long day at the office. I, my alarm went off 4.30 Saturday morning. A bunch of uh, the teams were on a charter down to Texas and then uh, did practice, did qualifying, did the race. It was 96, 97 degrees, felt like 107 with the humidity a uh, fire suit in a race car with an aero screen. So it was pretty hot. And then we flew home that night and I got back to my house at about 3.30 Sunday morning. So it was 23 straight hours of work. So it was, uh, it was a long day and it was so weird hearing the national anthem over the PA. And then when it was finished, it was quiet. It was just, it was almost eerie um, because no race I've ever done from go-karting to Formula Fords to IndyCar have we had no fans? I mean, there's always some friends and family in the grandstands. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk, you know, the weirdness of all that. I mean, I understand, you know, not having fans there. I think once, I think NASCAR has gotten used to it. Okay, we're racing in front of no one. But um, I'm sure that, you know, that I've, what I saw from the TV ratings, it was it was pretty up. And I think it helped that it was on national television. Um, what was it like, you know, because it looked like a lot of people did tune in and watch um, IndyCar's first race back. Well, it's good to have live sports on TV. I'm a, a sports fan as well as a racing driver. So to be able to go to the racetrack and put on a show for the fans at home uh, while they weren't at the racetrack, they were able to tune in. First time, Saturday night, primetime on NBC. Ratings were pretty good. I think we put on a good race. Strategically, it was unique because of the, the tire limitations. Because Firestone, with the shutdown, couldn't produce the tires they wanted for the race itself. So we were having to pit every 35 laps of green, um, which created a unique strategic challenge for the engineers and the strategists on the timing stands. And at the same time, the the track itself, as hot as it was, was a really narrow lane. I mean, a single line, not a lot of grip outside of that. So passing was at a premium. Track position, which you don't usually think about at Texas, um, but it almost raced like a short track in turns one and two and a super speedway in turns three and four. All right. Um, coming up, we'll talk with Charlie about more about IndyCar and some of the things that you might not know about him after this. Sure, what to do with itself? At 
Ally, we'll help it save for the future with our smart savings tools. For all things money, you deserve an Ally. And we're back. Charlie Kimball joins us. So, um, you know, one of the biggest things that uh, it's well put out there that you're also a diabetic. You know, this is the, your car is set up differently than other drivers. Talk about that specifically. I know we kind of talked about that when we had when I had you on the Zoom cast a few months ago. But kind of tell what it's like to go racing. As what did the team has to do to keep your blood sugar levels good? Well, my IndyCar is different than everyone else's because my body's different. Uh, I wear a continuous glucose monitor. And it transmits to a display, and that display actually plugs into the car's data system. So right before I get in the car, I hand it to one of my mechanics, Andrew. He plugs it in so that when I climb in the cockpit, I get my blood glucose right there on my steering wheel. Um, And not only can I see it in the car, but it's transmitted via uh, telemetry radio to the pit lane so the engineers can see it. In fact, I got a report this morning from my data engineer with my blood glucose tracking plus lap speed plus... Uh, position in the race um, based on the the whole race data that they pull out of the software and then I send that to my endocrinologist my doctor and my exercise physiologist and we take all that data and figure out if there's a way that my management could be better my numbers could be better so that I could be more competitive for the future Um, which is pretty unique and I think uh, using having diabetes as a reason to be a better athlete um, is something that I'm really proud of. Yeah. Um, You know, this off season, you signed on with AJ Foyt racing after a few years with Carlin. And before that, with Chip Ganassi racing, Um, did you ever think you'd drive for super techs? I wasn't ever sure, but it's uh, it's pretty special driving for, for AJ now, especially our first race being in Texas, uh, his home state, you know, he didn't make it to the race this weekend, I think, uh, between the heat and, and some of the health and safety factors. Um, he spent some time on his ranch on a tractor, but he was watching at home because Larry and I got calls right after practice, right after qualifying, right after the race. So uh, he was definitely paying attention. And like you said, it was good to see the AJ Foyt cars, let them know we were there. We were running up front. I think we were up as high as third, fourth at times. Um strategically and a few issues with lap traffic uh maybe not understanding where they were in the span of of lead lap cars we probably should have finished in that fourth to sixth seventh range uh we had a small miscalculation on the timing stand so we ended up 11th as you said had a little damage at the end of the race but still finished 11th which is a solid start for the first time i've ever raced for that team first time racing the number four car first time with the aero screen on a one-day show with no fans, there was a lot different, and we still executed really well. That aero screen, of course, the new safety initiative put forth by IndyCar this offseason. What was it like running with those on? It was different. Visually, it was totally fine. Even with the sun turning into turn three a couple of times uh, early in the race, there was glare right in our face. Um, but it wasn't. It wasn't ever too much glare. And even the the racing optics tear-offs held up really well. We only needed to pull a tear-off once every two, maybe even three stops. And Texas can be one of those events that when we didn't have the aero screen, our helmets would get pitted and, and, and worn really badly because of the dust and the dirt at the racetrack and in the air. Uh, and the aero screen held up fine. It was maybe a little hotter, um, but with the forced air coming into the back of our helmets and through our helmets, we were able to stay pretty cool. All right, coming up, we'll preview the Indy Grand Prix on 4th of July weekend, and NASCAR is going to be there as well. We'll be back. What is this thing? A rock soar. Ain't no turn signals. No traffic where this goes. Ain't no plastic. Nope. Box steel frame, too. Woo-wee, that's pretty. No nav TV screen. It's up there. Ain't got no license plate. Ain't street legal. That's the best part. If you're looking for unmatched capability and industrial strength durability, it all starts here for under 16 grand. Ain't no toy, huh? Nope. All good. And 
We're back. Charlie Kimball joins us. So before the break, we talked about, you know, the IndyCar NASCAR doubleheader at, at the road course. So how it works is the Indy cars will run first, I think at noon and followed by the NASCAR Xfinity series. And then the cup series will run on Sunday on the traditional Indy on the Indy course. What's that going to be like, you know, having all those people, unfortunately there will be, they will be closed to the public, but it's still going to be Indianapolis. It's, it's Indianapolis. The, the GMR Grand Prix has been one of my highlights. Um, I qualified second there a couple of years ago. I, I think I had like three fourths or fifths in a row. I like the best average finish of anybody in the paddock for a few years. Uh, it's a racetrack I really enjoy and have fun with, but it's going to be unique. It's unprecedented with a NASCAR IndyCar doubleheader. The fact that the Xfinity cars and the Indy cars will run the road course. I think practice qualify Friday, race Saturday, as you said, right before the, the Xfinity cars. And then the cup cars will run Sunday uh, on the oval. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of work for IMS and, and the track crew to switch from road course to oval Saturday night into Sunday. Um, but I'm going to be watching the Brickyard on Sunday from home. Um, and I hope it's after having a really good result on Saturday. You know, um, also, of course, the big story heading into IndyCar is the sport is under new ownership with uh, with the with Penske or with the Penske organization taking over. Um, it looks like they really have made selling on this sport as IndyCar is, and I think that it's going to be a bigger change when, of course, when the Holman George company had it for so many years. It's basically going to be you know a lot better. What changes have you seen with that? You see it from top to bottom. The, how they run the organization, both in IndyCar and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, living in downtown Indianapolis, I drive past the Speedway off and on uh, a couple of times a week usually, and seeing some of the different updates and upgrades, and it just, uh, I think Tim Sindrick actually at Penske Racing said the other day, it just looks like a younger facility at the moment. And I think that's a great way to say it. They're just some, some little pieces that have been cleaned up um, and Part of that's fresh ownership, fresh eyes, looking around going, why aren't we doing that? Can we do that? How about this? And these different thoughts. And, and Penske always runs a top shelf organization uh, in all of his businesses, from his race teams to his promoters to the truck rentals to the car dealerships, the body shops, all of those. And applying that same business uh, level and quality business acumen um, into the facility and the racetrack I think we'll only, it means the sky's the limit for the future. Yeah. And, you know, previewing this race um, at the Indy Road Course, you said that's one of your favorite events. Would First time that you've been with this team on a road course, what are you going to expect with this car? Well, we were really competitive. Um, the 14 car with Sebastian Bourdais was really competitive at the Coda Open Test back in February. And I think we there's no reason we can't be competitive. We're going to go spend some time uh, just a morning at the Team Chevy Driver in the Loop Simulator um, before we get to the Grand Prix racetrack. So we'll have an idea on the car and we'll have an idea on setups. And like I said, we'll just, we can execute the best we can. And when it comes to the race day, we'll get the, get the best result possible and see how we learn from there uh, headed to Road America the weekend after. All right, Charlie, thank you so much for doing this, and uh, we'll look forward to watching you at, uh, at, at the Indianapolis Road Course on the 4th of July weekend. Absolutely. Thanks, Casey. Thanks for having me. And I would like to thank all of you for the privilege of your time watching this Great Lakes Post live stream. I'm Casey Campbell. We'll see you next time.